Oh, hey guys. Welcome back to Reef Rooms. We're here with a nice little 10 month update. Hey! A lot has changed in the time. Hey, what are you what? doing? What? Get away! That's not the Reef Room way! <laughs> this is the Reef Room way! Roll the clip! All right, we're starting. I'm gonna start off with the livestock update. DJ Poly B and Snooky too. All right, P, both the first ones. I love you guys. They've been doing really well. They haven't really grown that much. I'd say maybe like a quarter of an inch, but they seem to be eating good. They both have the pot belly still, so they're all right. The urchin, which still one of my favorite inverts of all times, is around the tank 24/7. And the chato on its head actually grew, believe it or not. I don't know how, but it got a lot bigger than when we first got it. So that's kind of interesting to see. The conch has been doing really well in its habitat. I feed them kato, uh, not kato, nori, pretty much every other day, just to make sure they stay well fed. I got a piece in there right now. All the hermit crabs have really enjoyed their time staying at my hotel. They are always out and about picking up the rocks, same with the snails. I think a couple of the stereo snails have died, which is kind of to be expected. The one, the sump though, is still powering through. The pajama cardinal hasn't had really any issues. It just kind of sticks in this one spot where the grandma used to stay. And again, him, the grandma, the firefish, and the goby have all perished. And that is why, if you look at a couple videos before, I built the lid for the tank because when I get more fish, I don't want them to keep jumping out. I felt really bad that I found them on the floor dried up. I still don't know why they did. Maybe they got nervous, maybe something happened, but now having this lid, I'll be more secure. And Consuela was actually cleaning the goby when it had its little infection in its mouth, but she is just a really cool shrimp. I love having the cleaner shrimp. It was a real love-hate relationship because at a time she was picking at my torch coral and taking the food out. But for now, she's been doing really well and I have no issues with her. The feather duster has also been doing amazing. If you guys remember, it dropped its crown and it kind of like, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. And now it's the same size when I got it. So I guess the phytoplankton, I'll speak to the devil, literally as I did that, it closed up, but it, grew its crown to probably the size I got it at the store. So really cool. I'm hoping that it likes its position because the hammer coral is always trying to sting it. But speaking of coral, let's hop right into it. Unfortunately, starting off on this rock on the left, I moved my bird's nest because it looked like it was starting to bleach. And, and when I say me, I mean my brother who takes care of the tank while I'm at college. But for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna say me because you saw, he's not the reef bro, he's just the side piece. The coral, however, going back to the serious topics, I had I, meaning him, meaning I, cut off part of the bird's nest that was starting to brown and tried to glue it on another frag plug, see if that stays, but it really is just totally white now. I don't think it's gonna live, but until it actually doesn't have the little specks on it of green, I'm going to leave it in the tank. However, the naphthy and the GSP are doing really well in my manly tank of men. It's going to start to look like the naphthia wrecks out and the GSP creates a bush around it. And I'm not trying to get into your perverted mind, but it might look a little bit like what Shrek has under those loins that Fiona gets to see, if you catch my drift. Moving over to the right a little bit, the bubble coral is actually blown up a ton and me my brother and me have taken a photo of it and posted it and apparently it will blow up even more if you dose strontium which i'm not trying to experiment with because i don't know i'm finally in a good spot where nothing's dying at the moment knock on wood so i think it has perfect inflation now you don't want balls too big we learned that from ACDC. He's got big balls. I don't want too big of balls. Moving over to my Zoa rock colony. 
Everything looks decent. The Zoas, I think, have a mind of their own because sometimes they'll be out, sometimes they'll close. No end, ifs or buts, and then they'll open up, close up, open up, close up. Going from left to right, we have the Fire and Ice Zoa, which was in my second shipment. We have this red and yellow Zoa, which I don't know the name of, but it grows like a weed. And my plan for this one is to scheme and cut up some like parts of it, glue it on a frag plug, let it grow a little more, and then sell it back to my local reef store for some more fish. Pretty smart because I really don't like it and he'll take it. They sell it for like $40 a Zoa, so. I don't know about that one. To the left, the Rastamon, awesome coral. I'm hoping that one grows a lot. It has a couple more heads. I think it started with four and now we're at seven. So quick maths, three, growing pretty well. We have the Gobstopper Zoa and I think it's a Sunflower Zoa to the left of it. Both have done really well. The one behind it, I forget the name of it. And it doesn't look that great. Honestly, these three haven't looked that great in the last couple of days. I'm not sure why, like I said, they really have a mind of their own. Well, sometimes they'll grow, sometimes they'll close up. The one of them did blow off and it fell into the sand. So maybe that has something to do with it. I'm just gonna let them rock because obviously if some of the zoas are open, it means my tank quality is good. Moving forward, we have the two green torches and the little torch has actually been a, always a stud, will be a stud, and has grown a bunch of polyps. It still hasn't shot up a ton, but I don't know, the tentacles seem to have lengthened out. And the other torch, it just needs to split, man. It's been in this almost split process for like four months, I swear. And the indent keeps increasing, and you can kind of see it here. Like, it looks like it needs to be two heads, but... It's not, I know with a lot of the euphilias, the first, like first head, second head are the slowest to grow because it grows exponentially. So I'm just gonna let it rock. I mean, maybe eventually it'll split. Moving forward to the frog spawn that did split, it still has decent polyp extension. It hasn't been as crazy as it normally has been. I'm not really sure why that's been. I think it's just part of the ebb and flow of the coral and We'll see. I'm going to feed everything. And sometimes after I feed it, they start to extend a little more. Moving down, we have the hammer coral, which it seems to have fine polyp extension, but it's always sending its stingers out. I don't know what's good with that. I don't know if it's pissed at the feather duster or just like trying to wave its big old stinger out to show the other corals what's up. But it's literally all the time the stingers are out trying to sting. I might move the feather duster or I might move the hammer coral. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I'm planning on getting more rock eventually. So maybe I'll find another spot there. Moving to the right, we have Big Daddy, aka New York Knicks. We're on a hot streak, by the way. Got the Knicks. It looks the same. I don't think it's grown in the last three months. I don't know what's good with it. Uh, it seems to have fine polyp extension, but it really has not changed at all. I don't know why or what's up with it, but you know, it is what it is. Moving down to the front right rock, I have the chalice to the left of it, which I found out to be a fire chalice. And I was reading they're supposed to be on the ground, but I don't know. It really does not seem to like its spot. I had it close to the hammer pole, so I'm thinking it might've been getting stung. So I moved it to the right and behind the rock so it's not getting blown by any of the sand. And I don't know, I'm just gonna let it recover there. To the right, we have the Acan, which has some bubble algae growing under it. And I actually did not really like this one until I saw its feeding video, because I think it eats so cool when it actually consumes like a whole mice shrimp. Like you would not think that little guy right there has it in him to do that, but it did. So I mean, we take that. This small bubble coral has been doing fine. No real growth, nothing really to speak home about, but another really cool coral. I found out that this blue one is not actually a Fabia, but it is in fact a, let me check my note sheet, Lithophylon. I don't know if I said that right. That's what it's called. It's similar to the chalice coral where it likes medium light, medium flow and will eat mice and shrimp. So I'm not really sure the difference between that and the Fabia, but however, I did notice that 
It has some prominent mounts, which the Fabia really doesn't have. So I'm thinking maybe that's why it's more related to the Chalice, but Chalices have five different subclasses. So I think Reapers just get like way too deep into it. Like they're all pretty much the same, just with very little differences. Pretty cool coral though. I like the blue accents it adds to the tank. And now moving up towards the SPS, these guys, I really don't know how people enjoy them. Like, I really like the graphing Monte Pora because that will spread out and become like a sheet. So I think that coral is really cool. I'm happy I have that in my edition, but the sticks, like, what's the point? It's just a green stick. Starting on the left, I have absolutely no idea. So if you know what type of coral this is, please drop a name in the comments because I don't know. It started off brown. It's coloring up to green. It might be an Acropora. I searched everywhere. I could not find it. Moving to the right, we have the Thing Acropora. It's, like I said, it's just a green stick. Like, it looks cool, but I don't know if it's growing. I can't tell if it's alive or dead. I don't know why people spend so much money on, like, a Walt Disney frag that's hundreds of dollars just to be, like, a colorful stick. I can go outside in the woods and find a colorful stick if I wanted to. To the right, I think it's called the flame tip Acropora. I don't know, it kind of looks like the thing. I don't know why it's a flame tip. Again, that one's kind of coloring up. And in the back, we have the Jesus Acropora, which I did get confirmed. So I guess I needed a Jesus piece, not around my neck, but in the fish. Uh, it's again, a green stick with some purple on it. Maybe it's just cause my tank is like, they're getting used to it or something's wrong. I think they're supposed to color up more. I seriously have no idea. So if you have any info on SBS, please let me know. And then last but not least, we have the Duncan Coral, which at first I was like, eh, kind of cool, but it grows really fast. It already went from two heads and had the third, and now a fourth is popping up. So I guess it likes this spot. Like I said, initially I kind of just threw it in the back because I was like, sugar this guy, but he might get some VIP treatment. This is what the tank's looking like so far. Everything looks fantastic for the most part, and I'm super excited to see where it goes, and hopefully we get some solid growth. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I, I need money for fish.